Um, I'm Officer Williams with the Manhattan Police Department. Um, this is Mr. Murray. He Hello. is with uh, New Lenox EMA. Oh, Will County EMA. Oh, Will County EMA. So <laughs> uh, he's here to teach you guys about severe weather preparedness. So I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, All right, take thank the you. Lead. Thank you. It's first time, right? Yeah. All right. Well, good afternoon. My name is Tom Murray. I work for Will County Emergency Management Agency. And we're going to talk for a little bit today about severe weather preparedness. We're also going to talk a little bit about how you can receive alerts for severe weather preparedness and other kinds of uh, alerts. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to stop me and ask them. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys might have. And if I don't know the answer, I'll make up a really good one, right? Wow. All right. Um, and when we're done today, I, I brought some raffle prizes. So we're going to raffle off some prizes for you guys to take home today, or what, two of you anyway. We got a nice brand new weather radio, and the batteries are included. Huh? And then we have a personal preparedness kit that's full of all kinds of stuff. You've got a nice bag, and it's got uh, snacks and uh, some kind of water thing in here, and prepare. Oh, there's uh, candy, all kinds of good stuff in here. So. Uh, so when we're done, we'll, uh, we'll draw some names. So Firefighter Jackie's handing some cards out now. If you guys can put your name on there, we'll have somebody draw that when we're all done. Write your names on the cards. All right. So who's ready to learn about severe weather preparedness? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good enough. So a little bit about Will County Emergency Management Agency. Uh, we're the agency in the county tasked with planning and preparing and responding to disasters and helping coordinate all kinds of disaster response. We work with uh, county agencies, local agencies, the folks you see in the back of the room, those kinds of things. Um, our agency was established in 1959, originally as a civil defense agency, yeah. so some of you probably remember Duck and Cover, right? We grew out of that. Uh, we presently have 13 full-time staff and 80 volunteers that help us complete our mission. They do all kinds of things. They drive our big command van. They help us search and rescue. They direct traffic to assist law enforcement. So our volunteers are fantastic people, and we couldn't do it without them. So we're very thankful for them. In fact, today, one of our volunteers is in Springfield getting the Governor's uh, Volunteer of the Year uh, Award. So that's pretty exciting for us. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Um, some of our major program areas at our agency, right, uh, emergency planning and exercising. So yesterday we did a big exercise on the east side of the county and simulated a big tornado uh, that, that touched down. So we worked with the, with the uh, different jurisdictions to figure out how we work through those things. So we do that kind of stuff all the time. Uh, we, help, uh, we do a lot of public education and preparedness, right? Events like this, teaching the public how to better be prepared so that if something does happen, you can sustain yourself for the first couple hours to make sure that you're okay and the first responders can help those who need more help, right? Uh, we support local use of government, uh, again, severe weather, and then our agency is the agency tasked in the county with communication and warning, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a couple slides. So, uh, severe weather facts, right? You guys may know some of these. Uh, Illinois ranks fourth in the United States for the most tornadoes per square mile. So, um, that's something to be excited about, I guess, right? We get a lot of tornadoes in our area. Um, typically, they occur between April and the end of June, and traditionally, they're in the afternoon. Now that doesn't mean they can't happen any time of the day, right? We've had some that have happened well into the over hour nights. We have some that have happened first thing in the morning. So just because that's when these typically happen doesn't mean they're not gonna happen at other times of the day. So that's a really important fact to keep in mind. Um, on average, we see about 50 tornadoes annually in Illinois, and they can be little tiny ones, right? Um, maybe an EF0 that goes through a cornfield, right? So it doesn't necessarily always impact a home or a business, but we do see a fair amount of them. Um, anybody know why most lightning deaths occur near trees or in open fields? Well, not necessarily, but any, any ideas? So lightning likes tall things, right? So if, you're out in, if I'm standing out in a, that field across the uh, street, I'm the, I'm the tallest thing for a couple hundred feet, right? So it's going to try to find me on the tallest thing. Um, and again, that's why it's near trees. So if, if you're in a storm, going by a tree is not really a good idea, right? Better to go indoors. Um, uh, overnight severe weather is typically associated with uh, damaging winds and flash flooding. And uh, that's really an important thing too because at nighttime you really can't see as much, right? It's dark out so that's why we advise folks to not be out driving if there's a lot of rain because you might not know that the road is washed out. I've got a great picture of that coming up here too. So uh, anyway, watches and warnings. Who knows the difference between a, a severe thunderstorm warning and a severe thunderstorm watch? They get those terms get used an awful lot and sometimes they can be kind of confusing, right? I think warning, you need to get it, get someplace safe. 
Exactly. So warning means it's, 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 it's occurring or it's about to occur, right? It's an, it's an imminent thing. A watch, it means, you know, it's not happening now. It might be like today. It's blue sky day. But there's a front coming in from the west, and the forecast thinks that it's likely to happen, right? So again, watches, uh, they're favorable conditions for those things to happen, but it's not necessarily happening now. A couple of examples, right? A tornado watch, the conditions are favorable for the development of severe thunderstorms that can produce tornadoes. Not happening yet, but it's favorable. And again, the same with the severe thunderstorm watch, conditions are favorable, are favorable for the development of severe thunderstorms. And as you said, uh, a warning is it's, it's eminent, it's happening, right? So if there's a warning and you're outside, it's a really good time to get inside if you can or seek a better place for shelter than out in an open field. Now, I like pictures. And I think pictures make things make a lot of sense. So, a watch versus a warning, right? If we're having a cookie watch, we're getting ready to make cookies. If we're having a, a, co a cookie warning, we're eating it right out of the oven, right? Simple things can make things easy to remember. So cookie watches and cookie warnings. So there you go. Uh, we talked a little bit about this too, right? So what do we do during a watch and a warning? So when it's a watch, we want to be alert, right? If the watch gets issued right now, and again, it's a blue sky day, right? So we're here at the triad meeting. We might say, well, we looked at the weather radar and it said that in the next three to four hours, it's even more favorable. So maybe we finish our meeting and maybe if you were going to go to the grocery store tonight, maybe you think about going on the way home, right? You know, alter your schedule a little bit, but don't change your life because you want to be prepared. And you want to be uh, tuned into information, right? We want to have multiple ways to get severe weather uh, messages. And we'll talk about that too, different ways you can get that. So warning, uh, again, if it's happening, we want to get inside, we want to get somewhere safe. So, downstairs. exactly, downstairs. So in this building, right, this is uh, better than being outside, right? But there's still better places we could go, right? Because there's windows in a room and windows are less than favorable. So going into that atrium is even better, but even better still be going downstairs and there's a men's room and a ladies room, which is an interior room with no window. So we, we want to look for the best location based on where we're at. And it's not always a perfect location, but if it's better than being outside, that's a marked improvement. All make sense so far? Yes. Perfect. Again, some more graphics here about being prepared, right? So if it's a severe thunderstorm, watch. It means to be prepared, right? Have a way to receive weather messages. Have more than one way. Know where you can go for a shelter and stay weather ready. If there's a severe, excuse me, a severe thunderstorm warning, it's happening now, right? We need to be taking action. We want to get indoors and seek shelter. Uh, we want to use caution if we're driving because there might be down tree limbs or down wires or a road might be washed out because there's a whole bunch of rain. And uh, again, we want to keep an eye on the forecast and continue to stay weather ready and vigilant to what our surroundings are. Uh, severe weather safety plan. Who knows, who knows what that is and, and who has one for their house? Anybody? I've, I've got one for my house. How about anybody in the back have a severe weather plan for their house or with or the fire station or the police station? We have one at the fire station. All right. So we want to know what to do if there's a severe weather event, right? So like at my house, we've picked the spot. In my basement, under my stairs, we cleaned out all the junk we had under there, and we put a blanket and a one gallon jug of water and, a, and some styrofoam cups. So if we have to be down there for a while, we can have you know, snacks and something to drink, right? We've got that area set up and set aside. Um, if you don't have a basement, and we've talked about this, right? An interior room is better than an exterior room. And uh, we wanna know how to get in touch with people, right? So you know, throwing your cell phone in your pocket or your purse or whatever to take with you. Um, Bring a pair of shoes with you. That might sound ridiculous, right? But if something happens and there's glass shards on the, on, the, on the floor of your house and you're walking up the stairs, you don't want to cut your feet up because now you become a patient where if you had shoes, you could exit your home safely. So things I didn't think about until very, very recently. And then have a safe spot to meet folks. So uh, maybe you and your neighbor are going to decide, you know, there's that mailbox between our house after the storm goes through and maybe our houses might be a little messed up. We're going to go somewhere to meet together to make sure we're both okay. So things to kind of think about. Uh, these are pretty good ex examples of different kinds of severe weather we can have here in the Midwest, right? Tornado, we've all seen that. Hail, uh, the other, I don't know, last couple of weeks there was some storm down south and here were like grapefruit sized hails. I mean, I couldn't imagine being hit with that. It would, you know, it, that would probably leave a black and blue mark on your arm or definitely worse. Yeah, um, so one of our, funny, funny you mentioned that, one of, our, one of our agency vehicles a couple of years ago got caught in a, in a hailstorm and there was, 
I think 300 little hail marks on there, and it, it about totaled the vehicle out with all the body work to get it fixed. So hail is not something to mess around with. Um, we've all seen lightning and wind and flooding. Uh, my not official view, right? Flooding is one of the grossest ones because it just, all your stuff just gets covered in gunk, right? It's not really fun. Flooding is something to avoid if you can. Uh, so what do we do? Well, here's our tornado watch, right? So we want to make sure we have somewhere safe to go. Now, don't laugh at this one, right? The weather service says, bring a helmet with you. Anybody have an idea why you might want, why you might want to bring a helmet with? Well, you're going to ride your motorcycle, but for a head injury, right? right. Um, you know, pillows, they've even recommended, you know, maybe you, uh, maybe you live in uh, a single story house on like a slab, right? You don't have a basement or you have like an apartment or a condo and you go into your bathroom, if, if you can muscle a mattress with you, cover yourself up in the bathtub. Because that way, even if debris does fall on you or the roof somehow collapses, you've got a barrier between you and that hazard, right? So anything you can do to help protect your body and your head from flying the debris is a great idea. Again, we, you know, shoes to protect your feet from broken glass, a whistle. Um, whistles are great. I'd like to tell you a very ridiculous whistle story that my wife did to me. So when my daughter was probably four or three or four, we went out to my brother's house and my wife went to a conference for her work. And she works in schools and we were talking about things you can do to like motivate kids and whatever else. And she came home with a bag of whistles and proceeded to give the bag of whistles to my daughter in the back seat of the car, a six hour car ride. That was a long car ride. <laughs> right. Right, but having a whistle maybe in your safe area or in your emergency kit. Yeah. So if you do get stuck, you can blow a whistle and first responders can hear you, right? right. Um, this might not apply to everybody in the room, baby formula and diapers, but if you've got grandchildren or your kids have kids, making sure they have that kind of stuff, because you might be stuck there for a little bit. You want to make sure that your young kids are able to be taken care of. And if you have pets, you know, uh, you know, food and snacks for your animals, a leash so that if they get spooked, they don't take off and go running, right? Um, again, tornadoes, we want to get in, get down, and cover up, right? Sturdy building, the lowest level we can get to, and far away from glass as possible. An, an interior room is the best place to be at. A couple more safety things for different hazards, right? Tornado, uh, we talked about that pretty at length here. Uh, if you're like in an apartment, right, or a dorm setting, maybe you have grandkids or children who are in university still. Again, lowest level interior, I, I know I keep saying that, right, that's the important thing. Um, away from hallways and away from glass and cover your heads. Uh, if you're in a mobile home, right, uh, they know there's, there's some really nice mobile home parks in the area. There's a one south of Frankfurt, very nice area, but it's really not a good place to be at, right? Um, you know, there's not a lot of protection there. If there's straight line winds or strong winds, those, those kind of homes can, can get severe damage. So if you live in a community like that or you know someone who does, you really want to have a place you can go. Like some of these uh, communities have like a community building where they can have you know, social events. Try to get into a place like that. Um, or if you know you have time, maybe go to uh, the Burkhats, go to the shopping center, you know, somewhere where you can get in a more sturdy building, right? Um, or make plans to stay with your friends or something if you know something's forecast for it. So um, if you can't do any of those things, the best thing you can do in that situation is to, as a last resort, find a low area, maybe a ditch, and lay down and cover your head and neck as best you can so you don't get anything blowing at you. But again, we would really want you to be interior so that you're able to be a better protector. Right? Uh, we talked, I talked about this a little bit, right? There's terrible options and there's better options as we go across the uh, screen. You know, our worst options are mobile homes, vehicles, and an underpass of a highway, right? That's a terrible place to be at. Uh, better options, but still bad options, are like gymnasiums, right? Large trust uh, buildings. Those, those are great. They're very affordable to put up, but they're not super resilient and not very strong when it comes to these kinds of uh, events, right? Again, better options in a basement, an interior room. The best option, and again, this isn't always possible, is uh, FEMA actually will give you free building plans on how to build a safe room in your house. Um, you can retrofit it into your existing home. If you're building a home, you can give it to your builder and say, I want to build this, and it's got all the dimensions and material types. Um, they're really great rooms. They are uh, concrete, rebar in, forced walls. They have steel doors, and they have, um, they have air vents that are like, I guess, up and down kind of thing, so that debris can't get stuck in them but air can still pass through them. So if you're building a home, the plans are on the internet, they're totally free. So it's a good advantage if you're gonna be doing something like that. So again, so, you know, not so great, to, like the best option, right? So hopefully we're, hopefully we're closer to this side of the screen. We don't wanna be over here, right? 
But again, tornadoes, that's something to mess around with. We want to take immediate shelter if we possibly can. All right. Highway overpasses are not safe, right? I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've seen like a torrential downpour and there's some poor motorcycle guy who's riding and he, you know, he's parked his bike, he's kind of climbed up there because it's pouring rain, right? I can understand that, right? It's okay for like a rainstorm, but if you're gonna be in a severe weather event, it's a terrible place to be at because they can become wind tunnels and really do more damage to you as stuff is blowing through there, right? So you want to avoid hiding in those areas. You're better off being in a ditch uh, where you can cover your body up and you'll be kind of like beneath that threshold of where the severe weather is. So don't go there, right? Uh, I talked about hail, right? Again, there was, um, I'm pretty sure there was like uh, grapefruit sized hail a couple weeks ago down south. It was crazy, but hail can do all kinds of damage, right? Um, you know, if you're outside, you're gonna, you're gonna get pretty, pretty beat up here, right? You wanna, you wanna avoid that. It'll, it'll wreck your car. Um, we, I've seen more, I, I think I've seen more hail the last couple of months than I have in the last couple of years. So uh, be mindful hail, right? Not something to mess around with. You know, break a lot of windows and glass and, you know, dent your car up in your roof and that kind of thing. Also, watch out for people coming through the neighborhood afterwards, right? If the door-to-door -door guy is trying to sell you a new roof, my law enforcement friends, right? Probably not the best choice, right? Call someone that you know first. Don't let some weirdo come in your house look at your roof, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, lightning. Did you know that lightning is hotter than the surface of the uh, sun, right? It is, again, I keep wow. saying this, right? Weather is not something to mess around with. It'll, it'll mess you up if you're not careful. So you don't, so don't want to be outside in an open field and be the tallest thing when it's lightning out, right? Right? It's kind of, kind of cliche, but when thunder roars, you want to go indoors, right? You're going to get yourself somewhere safe. And we want to wait 30 minutes until the storm's passed to resume outdoor activity, because even though it might look clear, there still could be a front off in the distance that still has enough capacity to zap you, right? So we don't want to we, we don't want to be outside when there's lightning out. Um, a lot of parks and outdoor recreation. I don't know if I don't think Manhattan does. I don't know about New Lenox. A lot of them have like the Thor guard lightning things where if it senses lightning within 30 miles, it'll start making noise. Do you guys have two in New Lenox? Okay, per, those are great things. Um, you know, they're very reliable. I wouldn't put 100% reliability in, but if you see thunder or lightning, you want to go into it. But those are really cool technologies. Um, it's a pretty neat thing. Um, lightning safety, right? There's no safe place outdoors. You really want to be indoors. Um, if you can hear the thunder, it's close enough to hit you. Uh, if you hear thunder, take immediate shelter in a substantial building, right? Um, stay in, you know, stay in your safe shelter for 30 minutes until you've heard the last on the thunder. Stay away from windows, doors, they have porches, right? Because it could be all kinds of stuff coming in with that weather. How about this one? Why do you think we don't want to lie on concrete floors or lean against concrete walls when there's lightning out? Other than like your basement, right? So out, like outdoors. Any ideas why we don't want to be by concrete? Well, be wet and be a conductor. Partly, that's partly that, yes. Any, but there's a little bit more to it, but you're definitely, you're on the right course. Is it when concrete gets hit, it explodes? Partly that. It's concrete, a lot, a lot of times has rebar in it. And, and the lightning will find its way to like the metal. So yes, you're both absolutely right. It'll, it'll, it'll get wet, start conducting uh, electricity, but the rebar is what's gonna draw it to it and then it can, ex it can explode when it gets hit. So you wanna be careful with that kind of stuff. And again, your, your basement, a great place to be at because it's grounded, it's underground, you've got concrete, uh, you've got uh, water pipes, they're all grounded, so you're in good shape there. But like a pavilion at a park, not the greatest of choices. Uh, flood safety. Um, doesn't take much water to like knock you over, right? Six inches of water can knock an adult over. 12 inches can push your car away. Small car, 20, about two feet of water can wash your SUV way out of the way and you can't control it, right? I'm sure if you, if you guys use YouTube or the internet, you can search flooded cars. You can just a thousand videos of car people driving in the flood and then the car just starts going down the river, right? Um, but what really makes flooding dangerous is you don't know what it's done to the road. So this happened in 2013. Now. There's a, that is a Chevy Suburban right there, right? That, that's 127th Street up by Plainfield. So during the storm, it washed out a crater, Holy right? Look at that. If, if, and, and you couldn't see it when it was flooded. It looked like just a little bit of water on the surface of the uh, road, but had you driven through it, your car would have driven right in, right? So uh, that took like, I think, a couple of months to even get it fixed. So. Floods are, again, not something to mess around because you don't know what's beneath that. So, doesn't take much, you know, water's, 
Water's a pretty powerful force, and it's going to get where it wants to go one way or the other. And if you're in its way, sadly, you're in its way, right? Um, so how do we receive weather alerts? Who in the room's got a weather radio? Oh, we got to get some more hands next time I see you guys. We got some more hands up with that. Uh, we want to have multiple ways to receive weather, right? Um, outdoor warning signs we'll talk about in a little bit. Weather radios, um, smartphone apps, which we've got one at the county now, which I'll talk about. Um, you know, having having an A and FM radio or having the TV on the backside or in the background. Lots of other apps you can subscribe to. Uh, e you know, email services and text services that are free or little to no charge. So, definitely want to have more than one way to get alerted about se severe weather. Because you might be outside doing different things, right? If you're outside walking, you're not by your TV or radio. You're by your cell phone, maybe, or you're by you maybe have like earbuds and like a radio in or something. So, lots of ways to be to be notified. Did you know? The average person needs three notifications to do something. There's all kinds of studies behind this. So if the severe weather sirens go off, what do people do in the Midwest in, in particular? We go outside and we look, right? And then we wait for the TV to have it. And then we wait for our phone to have it. Wait, we, we, are, we are not good as people. <laughs> to do something when we get notifications. We oftentimes need multiple ways of getting it, so that's why it's important to have multiple ways to receive that information, so. Outdoor warning sirens, one of my favorite topics, or why can't I hear the sirens in my house? Yeah. Right? Made for people that are outside. You can finish the presentation. You are totally, perfectly spot on, right? <laughs> I, uh, I get more calls than I care to talk about, about people after a severe weather event. I didn't hear the severe thunderstorm, or I didn't hear the outdoor warning siren. My phone went off, I saw it on TV, but I didn't hear the siren, so I didn't go in the basement. Uh. Huh? Right? So, severe or outdoor warning sirens are just that. They're designed to notify residents and people who are recreating or outside, outside, right? Um, you know, this kind, of, this kind of technology came about in the late 50s, right? Out of the Civil Defense and Cold War things, right? It was the air raid sirens. Well, houses are built a lot better since then. There's better insulation, there's better building materials, better doors and windows. And it's designed so that, no offense to the folks in the back row, when the lights and sirens drive by your house, it doesn't impact your home on the inside. You can still listen to the television, right? Yeah. Um, if you're like me and my kids say I'm getting deafer as I get older, the, the TV's a little louder all the time, right? So I can't hear outside of my house anyway. Uh, I'm not proud of that fact. I think I need to get hearing aids, so we'll see. But, uh, but again, they're designed for outdoor warning, right? If you live next to the siren, you might hear it in your home, but it's not a guarantee, right? Um, so that's why it's really important to have multiple ways to be notified. Um, but when we do activate the outdoor warning sirens, uh, they're they're going to go off for three minutes at that out, at, 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 you know at that constant tone. Um, in Will County, the individual communities are responsible for making the decision to set the sirens off. So for Man you guys are Manhattan and Lenox, right? So for Manhattan and Lenox, the building just behind you on that beneath that white roof is where the dispatch center is at. So it requires one of two things to happen. It requires a supervisor in the field, so an a police officer or a firefighter to tell the dispatcher to push the button to set it off, right? Or it requires the supervisor in the dispatch center to see that the alert has been issued for that area and they decide to push that button. So it requires human intervention. It's not a bad system, but it's not a perfect system, right? And there can be inherent delays because it requires people, oh, yeah. right? So if you're out at the golf course, you're walking at one of the uh, parks, outdoor warning sirens are great. If you're in your home, me, I would, if it was me, I would want another way to be notified, right? Um, it's also possible that based on the duration of the storm, they might be sounded more than one time. So if you hear them twice, it's not at all clear. It means that the storm is progressing towards your community. It's maybe it's getting worse, right? So we don't ever sound an all clear siren. So you're never going to hear that. So if you hear the siren, you're outdoors, you want to go indoors as quickly as you can. But since you guys are so smart, you already have an app on your phone and it's gone off and you're already in the basement watching Tom Skilling and you don't even have to worry about the outdoor warning sirens, right? So it's not even a problem. So again, they are outside, not for inside. I, I probably said all this. They're not to be heard indoors for by design. You might, but not what they're designed for. It shouldn't be your only source of notification, right? You should have multiple ways of getting them. And again, 
it's not a perfect system, it's a good system, but it does require people and there is the possibility of a delay in that. So we want to make sure that we as the public have better ways of getting information and we can, and we can react more quickly. Uh, so when do we set them off, right? So at a confirmed setting of a tornado headed for the community by a trained weather spotter, uh, the National Weather Service might issue a tornado warning for that community and either the officer on the street or the dispatch supervisor recognizes that, they get notified and they go, ah, by our procedure, we, shut the, we should be setting the after warning sirens off. And then when you hear them go off, it's just a notification, right? There's no information with it, right? So you want to seek additional information, whether that's the radio, your phone, the television, the internet, whatever, so you know why they're going off. Um, you guys don't live by Braywood or Dresden Power Station, but we use outdoor warning sirens by those places too. So if you live, say, in Wilmington or Braidwood, it might be a, a perfectly blue sky day like today and be like, why are the sirens going off? Well, it might be something at the nuclear plant, so something to keep in mind too. Uh, by state statute, we test them the first Tuesday of every month at 10 a.m., but we do have the flexibility that if there is severe weather occurring or likely to occur, we might not test them so we don't cause confusion uh, with the general public, right? So if you don't hear them going off the first Tuesday of the month, that would be why. So, but otherwise, typically the first Tuesday of the month, right about 10 a.m. is when that'll be done. Okay, any questions about sirens? Because usually someone wants to fight me about why they can't hear the siren at our house, so I'm excited about this. I have to tell you, this is, this is, this is great. Um, weather radios, right? They're great. They don't cost a whole lot of money. Sometime during the year, uh, either Tom Skilling or one of the meteorologists on one of the TV stations partners with like CBS or Walgreens or Meyer or one of them, and they sell them for like 15 bucks. So uh, if you don't have one, they're not super expensive to get. You can get them online. You can get them all kinds of places. Um, and you can program them for the kinds of alerts you want to hear, right? You might not want to hear flood warnings, but you might want to hear things about thunderstorms and tornadoes, right? Um, they work 24 hours a day. It is a free service. Your tax dollars pay for all this to work except for the actual receiver, which you have to buy. But it's a, it's a great investment to make. Um, wireless emergency alerts. This is another way you can be notified of severe weather or things like amber alerts or silver alerts or things like that. Um, how many people have been driving somewhere and randomly your phone makes this insanely loud noise and you have no idea what it is, right? So that is what we call a wireless emergency alert or WIA. Sometimes we use the word iPaws is the, the technology that kind of makes all of that work. Um, what's really neat about that is it's based on where you're at, right? So if you're on vacation in Arizona and you live here in Will County, you don't have to sign up for any alert systems in Arizona or wherever you're at between here and there. If you drive through an area that has that severe weather going on, your phone will, will go off. It's, it's another product of the weather service. It's a great technology. It doesn't require you to opt into it. And it comes on your cell phone, it comes default that it's turned on. You have to go turn it off manually. So I'd advise you, you know, maybe not do that, right? Um, what else? Uh, okay, we can be talking about all those things, right? Uh, the types of alerts that you're going to get, uh, extreme weather, right? So severe thunderstorm warnings, I'm sorry, severe weather warnings, uh, thunderstorm warnings, tornado warnings, things like that. Uh, amber alerts for missing children, uh, blue alerts, or sometimes they're called silver alerts for, for missing seniors. Um, other local emergencies requiring evacuation or immediate action, right? So what's really neat is that my office at the county, we have the ability to set those kind of messages off too. So if we have to recommend an evacuation for some you know, hazardous material reason, we can do the uh, same thing. We can send it to your guys' cell phones based on the, the location of where you're at, which is really nice. Um, and the reason why we had this whole thing, it was designed so that the president can send out presidential alerts through a national emergency. That was the real reason the whole thing was built. But we can do all kinds of other cool stuff with it. So, Exactly, right? Um, the types of weather alerts that they set it off for, some of them don't apply to us. I don't think we're going to get hurricane or typhoon or storm surge uh, or you know, maybe we might get snow squall but, or, or tsunami, right? If we get any of those, we're really in trouble. But tornado warnings, for thunderstorm warnings, things like that is why we would get them set off in our area. Um, if you have never seen one, they kind of look like this. Your phone makes this really crazy noise. They pop up and they say, you know, the weather service has issued a warning, this kind of warning in your area, um, and you can just, just you know, acknowledge the message and it goes away. So, uh, But everybody, I mean, maybe everybody's seen a couple of these at least once or twice? Okay, cool. Um, if, you're, if your phone is more than a couple years old, it may or may not work, but if it's relatively within the last 24 or 36 months, it probably does work. Um, 
If you want to know if it works, you can go to this website. It's called uh, ctia.org slash WEA. You can type in what kind of phone you've got. And it'll tell you if it's if it uh, if it's capable of doing that thing. But again, most phones in the last I would maybe even four or five years had that capability built in. Um, if you have a flip phone like my dad still does, it may or may not work. But you know, we're, we're, I'm going to get them off that eventually, right? Okay, um, I probably beat this to death too. But other ways to receive weather alerts, right? Like I love Tom Skilling, uh, but you want to you know have websites you can view, apps on your phone, things like that, right? We don't want to rely on one single source of information. We want to have multiple ways to, to get notified. Which again, this kind of says the uh, same thing, but we don't want to rely on one thing, right? Because one thing could fail. Um, you know, outdoor warning sirens are great, but it's a mechanical thing, right? It, 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 it could break. We don't want to rely on that. You don't want to rely on your phone exclusively because maybe your battery dies, right? You want to have multiple ways of getting notified. Uh, who has a preparedness kit in their car by chance? Anybody? All right. So we want to have this kind of stuff, right? Because you might be traveling, something might happen, right? First aid kits, flashlights, sna snack. You can never go wrong with snacks, right? You never have enough snacks in your car or water. Uh, jumper cables, you know, road flares, things like that. So if you don't have that kind of stuff, I'd recommend you kind of put that stuff in your car. It's, good. it's definitely a, a good thing to have. And in wintertime, maybe add things like a bag of kitty litter, a small shovel, extra coat and gloves, you know, all that kind of stuff so you don't freeze. Blankets. Blankets are great because you can take a nap then, right? Blankets are awesome. Pillows. Uh, it's going to be summertime, I hope, soon. I, thought we, I think we got a tease of it a week or two ago, and it was about 80 out. Now it's 40 out, which I don't like, right? I'm, I'm wanting more 70s and 80s, but summertime heat safety, right? We want to make sure we drink a lot of water and stay hydrated, right? Carbonated beverages, uh, they are delicious. I am guilty of that, but they don't do a good job of hydrating you. They make you dehydrated, believe it or not. So a lot of water, that's, that's good. Sunscreen, you know, don't be in a sit in the sun too long, get some shade hat and sunglasses and never leave you know, your pets or children in the vehicles with their windows rolled up because one of the fine folks in the back window will come and break your car window and they don't want that, right? right. Nobody wants that. I hope All right, well, we're gonna talk, I got a tool for you for that too. Um, our app, so the county EMA, we've got an app. Um, we just finished working on it. Uh, we are relaunching it, I think it launches next week. If you have an iPhone, it's working now, but we're not advertising it yet. The Android app should be out next week. Um, but you can sign up for severe weather messages. You can sign up for our mass notification system on your phone so that if something does happen, we can message out to your home and tell you about it too, right? Uh, that's also on our website. You can sign up there too. You can make a, an emergency plan. You can do all kinds of stuff. It'll list where there's warming and cooling shelters at. If there's an evacuation and you need help evacuating or your neighbor might need or your friend because um, they're uh, you know they're like they're on an oxygen concentrator or they're homebound. We can you can tell us that stuff, and if we have to have an evacuation, we'll send someone to help get them out of their home and get them to somewhere safe. So, all kinds of cool <laughs> stuff that are going to be in our app. Um, again, coming very soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, other resources. If you're if you're web savvy, right? You go to our website, willcountyema.org. We have all kinds of cool stuff on there. Um, ReadyIllinois.gov and Ready.gov have tips on preparedness, how to prepare yourself, your family, your pets, your <laughs> children, your grandchildren, all that kind of stuff. And the last one is RedCross.org. If you want information about, they have great programs for feeding and sheltering, uh, smoke detectors, all kinds of stuff. So a lot of good resources there too. Um, lastly, this is one of my favorite. The scientists have done it. People won't ever have to go outside to look for severe weather and they get the alert. What do they do? Everybody wants to go outside, right? The, the sirens go off, what do we do? What's happening out there, right? Yeah. Not go to the basement, so. Well, I'll be here for a little bit. If you guys have any questions, you feel free to come up and ask me. But again, no I thank you for the opportunity to be here, for being such a great audience and listening to me talk about severe weather today. And if you ever have any questions or concerns about severe weather, there's my information. You can always send me an email or call our office and I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys might have, so. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. Triad works to improve the quality of life for seniors by providing an opportunity for the exchange of information between public safety, social services, and seniors. There are no membership papers to fill out or fees to pay. Everyone is welcome to attend. Each month, we present a guest speaker on subjects that keep you informed and up to date on the latest scams, frauds, and other criminal activities. We also discuss safety issues, home preparedness, and staying healthy. 
Triad meets the fourth Thursday of every month. Contact the New Lenox Police Department at 815-462-6100 for more information.